everyone, this is Mai with Rubata Music Therapy and today I'm going to talk about how to figure out a simple song by ear. Okay, so I'm going to tell you a really embarrassing story back from when I was applying for an internship. I was debating about whether or not I should share this, but in the spirit of transparency, I think I'm going to. So when I was applying for an internship about two or three years ago, I had a Skype interview with an internship site, and I'm not going to say which one but she asked me in my interview to play happy birthday in any key and i had to figure this out by ear and i could not do it at all <laughs> needless to say i definitely didn't get into that internship this was definitely partially nerves but it was also partially an inability to take the information that I learned in classical music oral skills and transfer that over to a more popular music setting. But I'm sharing this story because I don't want this to happen to you. So here are a couple tips and tricks that I've learned along the way that hopefully will help you guys. The first thing you should do when you're listening to a song is to figure out what key it's in. Usually with simple songs, the melody will start in the root of the key or with more complex songs, you're just gonna have to hear where it sounds most at rest. Once you know the key of the song, then you'll figure out what notes are in that key, and once you know the notes, then you know the chords. Another thing that I like to do when I'm listening to a song is to listen for the bass. The bass is usually gonna be the root of each chord that's playing over it, so the bass will usually tell you what the chord progression is. When you're listening to a song, you're going to wanna keep in mind what chords are most likely to show up in a progression. The most common are one, four, and five, followed by two and six, and then three and diminished seven are much more rare. Keep in mind, one, two, four, five, and six are also notes that are in the pentatonic scale. Now I'm gonna give you a couple examples of three chord progressions that I see a lot. Obviously, there's a ton of different chord progressions out there that are also really popular, but if you know these three basic ones, then mostly the other progressions are just variations of them. Okay guys, so the first chord progression I'm going to show you is one, four, five. This is a really popular progression in classic rock. Um, it's also really popular in kids music as well. Keep in mind, the chords don't have to come in this exact order, but there are a ton of songs that use these three chords as their foundation. Here's a couple really popular examples. Down by the bay, where the water mounds go, back to my home, I dare not go, or if I do, my mother would say, he wear no shoe shine, he got toes and football, he got monkey fingers, he shoot Coca-Cola, he said, I know you, you know me, one thing I can tell you is you got to be free, you are my son. are great examples of how you can use one, four, five in a chord progression, not necessarily in that exact order. The second song, Come Together, was a minor variation of one, four, five. That's a great example of how people use seventh chords to spice up a classic progression like that. The second chord progression is a four chord chord progression, and that's one, five, minor, six, four. This chord progression or a variation of it comes in so many songs.
that progression is used in a ton of different music from country to pop to Disney. It's really versatile. So if you have a simple song that you're trying to figure out what chord progression it is, high probability that it's going to be that or a variation of that. Another chord progression that I think is essential for music therapists to know is the 12-bar blues. The 12 bar blues has a lot of different variations, but the most basic version is you play one for four measures, four for two, one for two again, and then you go to five, four, one. The 12 bar blues is just basically a variation of the one, four, five progression, but I think it's really essential for music therapists to know this progression because you can use it for songwriting. It's easy to learn, it's catchy and it adds just enough variation where it doesn't get boring. You ain't nothing but a hell of a dog. different chord progressions. Um, something else that I would like to add is a lot of songs use these basic chord progressions but they add sevenths to them. So if it sounds like it kind of fits but not quite, you can always try and add sevenths to your chords. Another common thing that happens with chord progressions is that sometimes you can replace the minor six for a minor two instead or you can do a two five one progression that's more of a jazzy progression. But these three chord progressions are like the foundation of music. Once again, this isn't a complete overview of every single possible chord progression you can hear, but this will hopefully give you a basic idea of what to listen for. If you have any questions or you want to add on to whatever I've talked about today, feel free to drop a comment down below. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you guys for my next video.